YouTube. Thank you for stopping in for another video today. If this is your first time tuning in, my name is Mark, and this is the newest build on the channel. It's a 2012 Ram 3500 fourth gen Cummins. Man, that's a mouthful. Or as the fellow truckers may call it, uh, it's my Cummins. So anyways, today's goal is to get a lift on this thing. Uh, I went back and forth on what size to do, what was practical, what was just um, too over the top, what was not enough. Right now, the thing has a two and a half inch leveling kit on it. That was a whole different video. Link up here to that video if you wanna see us try and fit um, what we're gonna try and fit this time, a 35 on a 24, 22 by 14, negative 81 offset wheel. Not even close. Like that tire was just coming right into the fender. Like I would've had to cut like that if I wanted to make it work. So this lift is gonna make sure we clear that. This is a temporary wheel and tire setup. I got the OG good looking tires coming for this. Wheels are still up in the air, but Tires we'll, we'll talk about later when they come in. Some simple stuff we've done so far. I'm sure I'll forget a bunch of this, but we got the Boost Auto Parts sanded and smooth mirrors with the turn signal switchbacks. We did the painted cab lights. That was a whole nother video of getting that stuff installed. Uh, third brake light also painted as well. Tail lights painted as well. So we kind of got the whole clean look going on here. Um, now I, I do want an opinion on your guys' side is what to do with this bottom half. I've been going back and forth. Do we keep the silver? Some people call it classy and it looks good. Some people say it looks like a grandpa and we're gonna have three colors now going on between the lift color that I'll show you in a second, the silver and the blue. So it's like, I don't know. What, what do you guys think is the best option? Keep it, keep the silver or just paint it all blue and keep it one solid color. Because we do have the flog bumpers coming soon. Those are in paint as well. And I'm gonna do those in blue. And then uh, the grill is going to come eventually mesh black. And then we got some sick Alpha Rex heads that I can't wait to do the install video on. They are the nastiest, meanest heads for these fourth gen Rams. They make a lot of other cool products too for other vehicles. So enough of me blabbing on. Let's head over to the parts to be installed area and show you what we're looking at. We got some green. We got some red. We got some white. And mine's definitely going to be the green stuff here. So this is a color I've never done before. It's uh, Illusion Sour Apple. So to pull some of this plastic off and show you guys, it has a lot of flake to it, heavy flake, and uh, it'll bounce from almost like on a camera, it looks yellow right there and then like green back here. I think it'll look great underneath of there because I wanted that wow factor. I just didn't want another clean ram. I wanted to like, whoa, that is, uh, that's different. So we got the springs. For the six inch kit, this is a six inch long arm kit. Here's the brackets for the bumpers. I actually still need to get those painted. And then uh, what else do we got? We got all the bushings we had to press out, press out before we sent the arms off the powder. Rear lift blocks that we won't use. New lift blocks that we will use. These are two inch blocks and those are four inch blocks. Reason being that I went with two inch blocks instead of the four inch is this is kind of a shot in the dark, kind of just based off measurements here. When you look at this truck, even though it has a leveling kit, you can see the back, that area is bigger than this area up here. This thing has about a two inch rake still. So when I got it, it really had four inches of rake because of the factory front and then four inches higher in the back. Reason being the guy who used this before me, I think he hauled some weight in the back of this old girl, especially basing off the gooseneck back there. And there's an add-a-leaf in here for sure. Looking at a different truck and then comparing that we had in the shop to this, I, I definitely have an extra leaf or two in here for this. I'm sure the guy put it in there so we could tow a little more weight with it. No doubt at all in my mind. But uh, that's definitely why the back's a tire, so I'm gonna have to compensate for that. Now for shocks, I took a slightly different route. In the rear, I did the mono tube, so that's just a, a single tube, single shaft, uh, no reservoir or anything like that, because I don't know, I may change up to an airbag setup in the rear, who knows. Front, I know I'm keeping, you see them, so I wanted to kind of get the, the high end on that and see what kind of ride we could get out of this thing. So let me show you what's inside of here. Inside of here, we have the Fox Remote Reservoir, and they call this the 2.0 Performance Series. Performance Series, because you get an adjustable, I guess we call it adjustable reservoir, uh, but that's basically to adjust how stiff or soft your ride's gonna be. You can adjust this on the fly. And it also came with these brackets. My hope with these brackets, it, this is just some random universal bracket, like this isn't made for this truck. And I'm gonna try and use this bolt to go off of that stud right there. So that way this thing will sit right there and the remote reservoir will sit right where my uh, finger is. So that's the plan anyways, but um, before we get any farther in this, we definitely have to get this thing up in the air. I'd love to, oh, we got the master install, Hayden. We got Jordan over here for backup. And uh, we're gonna try and get this sketch to the end of the year. I'd love to use the lift, but right now this Ford is on there and it's getting a, uh, a re-gear. Probably won't be done till midweek and uh, I don't wanna clog up the system with the stuff we have 
lined up for next week's schedule. So this is kind of all tore apart right now. Now, more to caution. See this right here? It says caution. Do not try this at home. That that's pretty much how this should go. Uh, it's it's very sketchy to get it up on these jack stands, but it's actually the way we built this truck um, before we had the shop and the two post lift and all that. So it's not ideal, but uh, they're sitting outside. So I'll set up a time lapse so you guys can watch uh, how sketchily and terrible it is to get this thing to a reasonable height to work on it. The time lapse doesn't really do that justice. When this thing's like camera the whole way back, at least this time we had a little bit of like rubber to stop because you, I don't know if it would ever happen, but you worry about this truck kind of the frame sliding because it's just metal on metal. But we throw them up there because it's out of the way. And then in the back, we just throw them as far back as we can, which is up into this area on the frame. Now that that's done, it's time to start tearing into the front here. We're just gonna do basic stuff like get the wheels and tires off and the bump stops and like the, the first few steps, probably the, the track bar right there and small things. And then tomorrow we'll hit it hard because tonight is a uh, Friday night, get to bed early and come out this tomorrow. And that is what we call hot off the press. So this shock fought us when we did the leveling kit and now we had to actually conquer it now that we had to get everything out of it. The only piece we need is this little stand right here uh, because that's what the new shock mounts up into. On the other side, we still have everything in place so I can show you. So this little tripod holds the shock up into there. They got rid of this in 2013, I believe, and they switched to putting the shock over here and then the spring right here. So it's a little nicer to work with versus this. This kind of sucks because for this exact reason. So we're gonna have to get the bottom of the shock out that we can fish, fish the spring out of here because right now it's stuck with that shock being in there. As far as other parts that have come out so far, uh, kind of attack the steering first is what you want, they wanted you to do. So the pitman arm came off of there. That was uh, not as bad as the drag link that connected to it. That would be about right here. Track bar also came out of here, just kind of off to the side right now. And then the drag link itself took out completely, get it out of the way. Sway bar, they told you to take completely out of the vehicle, which makes sense because it's out of your way and we have to put a spacer between here and the frame. Hardware for the track bar, hardware for the uh, spacers for that. I believe they said to retain this. And then we have the pitman arm, or the pitman actual nut that holds it onto the steering box. Other half of the shock that fought us, we did have to pretty much cut this thing in half. So not that we were gonna reuse these anyways, but just made it a little bit harder than it had to be. So with that being done, that pretty much gave us all the drop that we're gonna be able to get out of these factory arms, you can see they start hitting right there. And then on the bottom, it's about to hit too. So that's about as far as we can take this thing to, to get everything out and that's all the more we need right now. Because after this, I believe we're gonna start getting into cutting all this off. So this bracket is gonna get chopped off of there. It's welded to the frame and then the new bracket will be farther back on the frame, giving us a smoother ride from that long arm kit versus a, a short arm because a short arm would essentially just replace this New bar is a little bit longer to get this axle forward. But it, when you start to get this steep, if you think about it, the, the force of the road is going like this. So when these bars are, you know, almost straight, down a little bit, most of the force goes up into the axle, up into the suspension. But once you start to lean it like this, like it is, now your force is going up into the frame and that's when you get all the feedback into the actual truck itself. So to get that angle, those arms again that we need, we're just gonna have to go farther back, farther back with it. Brackets, and I wanna say they end up somewhere around here. We'll find out obviously, but that's kind of the next step to get this thing moving. I didn't get the video of us taking this stuff out of here, but the reason we took these out of here is for powder coat, we didn't want these in the oven. So this little snap ring held them in and they were just pressed in until they uh, hit, the, hit the back of this where they kind of seat against the actual bar itself. So now that we have those done, the only thing left is to have the bushings and grease fittings on this side. But for now, I'm just kind of laying out all the hardware here. It kind of looks overkill, but that way you can kind of see what you have um, of how many of everything. Cause we start listing out part numbers for stuff on here and it's easy to just kind of look right on here and see what part numbers you have instead of trying to, to find stuff in a bag, makes it a lot easier. But the first thing they want us to do is to install the track bar relocation bracket, which drops everything down, which lets you utilize your factory track bar. So the factory bracket is here and it looks like that new one's gonna bolt in somewhere over there and just bring that hole down. Just, that's pretty much the whole name of the game here. That lift is just dropping everything down. 
with the bracket installed, you can now see how we had to put one hole over here and then this little tab goes up in 90 and it makes gives you basically a nut that's welded to this tab to hold on to while you tighten it. But the track bar is eventually gonna go up into here, but we're not gonna get to that stage just yet. Uh, the next step is gonna be the pitman arm. That's what they want us to do. Now, the reason they do this is because that drag link, once again, everything gets dropped down. Now, something pretty much every aftermarket pitman arm is gonna have for a lift after a certain height. First off is a, a longer neck right here. You guys can see the, the difference between that. They give you more of an angle down to drop it. And then normally your drag link bolts in from the top, but to get that shaft even lower, they're gonna now bolt on the bottom. So you can kind of, you can't see it, but I can feel the taper is tighter. It's basically just reverse of what that is. So next, this will go on with some thread locker and 220 foot pounds onto the steering box shaft. So that wraps up the front brackets that are the new bump stops. Now granted, these things are like so overly engineered, but the thing is I, I kind of like it. They absolutely suck to install because you got to drill a hole through here for this bolt. You got to drill a hole right there through this cross member and then feed that little 90 degree bracket to get the nut on through the bolt that's up inside of there. So they aren't fun, but at least they, you know, it gives you some more color. If you powder coat your lift, you can kind of see a little more underneath here. So. So that part of it's definitely cool. But the next step, I believe for us, is going to be attacking these four link bars, the factory ones. Really dreading this part of the task. Um, I know they said this bolt up here, I think they said it doesn't come out, you gotta cut it. Um, and it's, it's definitely not gonna be a, a fun time, but that's gonna be the next step. And as you can even tell now with factory bars, see how off this axle is, this, should be hitting over where the actual pad is for the hit. So that's how far back this axle is. And that's why you get those new bars to push everything forward. A leveling kit, you know, it's off a little bit, but not enough to really make a huge difference. But when you get to a lift kit, especially six inches, everything is just way off. So irrelevant to you guys, but we are actually back here on day two of the install of this lift. Um, yesterday, got a little bit late last night, but where we ended up was we got the four link bars off the truck. That was a big, big win. And an even bigger win yet is we were actually able to save the lower cam bolts. Now, these do not come in any lift kit. I understand this is an OEM part, but usually these get stuck and galled into the actual uh, bar itself that sits down in here. And these are responsible for, um, you use these for alignment to adjust the pinion angle at which the axle sits at. So you can't just throw a regular bolt in there. It has to be this special type of bolt with that little bit of groove for that um, little cam lobe to sit into to be able to twist things around. So those came out. Um, if you remember the video on the second gen where we did a lift install on that, check it out up here. If you didn't see that video, they had to be cut. The directions even said, hey, for these trucks, notorious, they get stuck. Um, but super happy those came out. Now they did fight us, but at least they're out of there. Next step is to get these old brackets off of here. And as you can tell, they are not bolted. They are 100% welded. Uh, a few spots along the bottom, up along the top here, that's gonna be fun to cut the weld up by this wiring harness up into there, there, a little, little bit everywhere. On the inside here, we have brake lines and all that that are pretty much right by this weld where I need to be cutting. So that'll also be another fun one to do. The worst is probably gonna be this side, which the exhaust fits right up into here. So. There's really not much room for your hands to play with with a grinder up into there. The, uh, yesterday, we had to get this bolt out of here, and you actually had to cut it. There's no way to get that bolt out without taking the exhaust out. We weren't about to have to mess with the exhaust and all that, so we ended up cutting the bolt twice. Once on the other side, hit it through, cut the head off on this side, and then punch it through the other way to, to get the just little little tiny bit left that was of the bolt out. So I'm not going to bore you guys with um, just sitting here grinding for forever, so we'll do a time lapse. Uh, the, the plan is to first slice the bracket to just leave that weld and bracket on the frame and then I'll come by with a grinder and then just keep hitting that with a flat disc until it's completely smooth because I don't want to end up gouging in it because when you cut into something you, you kind of got to come in at an angle due to the, the grinding wheel and I don't want to dig into my frame and put a bunch of, of cuts into the frame so we're going to do it as safe as possible probably going to take some extra time but I'd rather do that than have to end up welding and filling in all my little cuts. I tell you that's a workout in a uh, close to 80 degree shop right now with all this crap on beating that thing off there 
That is not something I would want to have to do every day. That's uh, that's not fun. A man alive, she is off. Lots of beating and cutting later. It's tough because you want to keep cutting, but you don't end up cutting through your frame. So like right here was about perfect. Uh, a little sh overshot the gap right there, but it's just a tiny bit. So my plan is to grind the weld away. Same with on the inside, I'll, I'll grind part of that away. There's the rest of the bracket we have. I'll show you what the inside's like. That was the hardest part was cutting this inside. So inside the frame, I kept this tab here. The plan is to cut it like right here and soften this edge. A, you'll never see it and B, it's just too risky. These are fuel lines right here. These are brake lines right up top. So to, to cut that away, it's, it's really not worth the risk. Same with this over here next to this fuel line. So I'll end up just kind of cutting that off right there and making it look good um, for the inside of the frame. Like I said, you'll, you'll never see it, doesn't matter. But uh, just want to make sure it's not some jaggedy edge like that. I, I can't leave it like that even if you never even saw it. But hey, on the plus side, guys, front of the lift looks really good from back here. So if I'm ever underneath here, uh, do my transmission because it's a Dodge thing, I'll at least be like, hey, absolutely beautiful. This right here pretty much sums up how this is going so far. Luckily, to my knowledge, this is the end of the cutting between the little guy, the big guy, kind of getting in everything. So we got these pockets off here we already got that done but what i read next in the instructions was the sway bar end links that are welded to the axle right here next have to come off because they have their own bracket that sits flat against this so we had to cut those off and then get this nice and smooth here for the new plate to, to butt up against that so both sides had to be trimmed off of there and just the sheer amount of discs and metal and everything down in here Definitely took a toll on the old grinder today. This side came out really nice. It's all nice, flat and smooth the whole way across there. So we'll go ahead and probably vacuum all this up, clean all this up, hit it with air hose because there's just metal all over the axle. And then uh, got hit paint on those two bare spots. And then we'll be moving forward. Jordan is working on the install of the bars. He got all the bushings in over here. Um, different, different ones here. They're kind of confusing on uh, where all those go, but the ends are put into them, the grease fittings are put in, so they're pretty much ready for install. You guys saw us do the pressing of these guys earlier, so there's just a little collar that kind of went on the end of those. And then bushing, grease fitting, through the middle. Day three of the install is here. Uh, now I guess it's not really three full days because technically I'm only trying to work on this after hours. You know it's bad when like the, the trucks behind me are all getting done and leaving but this guy is still sitting right here because it's not right for me to just work on my own stuff. Obviously customers have been scheduled ahead of time so this is any time like after five or before uh, eight or nine. So right now we're trying to catch up in a little bit of time and see what progress we can make. But let me show you what we did yesterday because I didn't really get any clips of that. Started tearing into the back, got the two inch block into here. The pin was a little bit different size than what came in the kit, so uh, Hayden's actually kind of tackled the back. And you can see with one of the blocks here that he did, had to grind away the center section because the, the pin size was way bigger and it wouldn't fit up in that leaf, so kind of had to, to shrink it down a little bit to make that work. But the hardware is slowly but surely making its way off the table and onto the truck. Now a halfway point review of this lift kit so far pretty much is summed up in two ideas. Idea number one being Excellent kit, well built. Number two being a pain to install. We've done other lifts and usually they are not this bad at all, which I guess isn't a bad thing. It's kind of like things are just overdone. Like this bump stop, like we talked about, there's really, I don't see a need for that bracket to come off of here, but it looks cool at the end of the day. It's something that I'm sure I'll look back on and be like, oh, I'm glad that's like that. Um, all this stuff with the holes and everything on the frame. I understand that these trucks, you know, the brackets are up here, so kind of have to move them back here, but it's like either this truck doesn't have many factory holes to utilize or they just didn't utilize them. But either way, we're getting it done. But let's talk about how many holes I had to drill on this thing. How many holes do we actually have to drill into this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two. Twenty-two holes in the old frame of this truck. So that definitely adds up in terms of sitting here just drilling over and over and over again. Um but hey, like I said, at the end of the day, if it's a nice kit and it's very functional and it's very secure, that's really all that matters. The install, if it sucks, it sucks, it is what it is. On that transmission cross member where that third jack stand is in the middle there is uh, it's supporting the trans because we took this out. This is a transmission drop bracket that came with the kit. 
So from the factory, this piece was about up to here. So what they do is they just shrink it down a little bit and then that drops, kind of changes the whole course of your engine and everything, kind of drops the trans and angles it down a little bit. A couple of reasons, number one, it lowers it down so your front drive shaft angle is a little bit nicer, a little bit lower. And also you're changing the um, angle of your output shaft for the drive shaft in the back. So it makes that a little easier as well. So really not uh, too complex. Usually they give you like an indexing ring or something where you got to take the transfer case off, index ring on and put your transfer case back on the transmission. So a little easier approach, never actually done one of these. So we'll, we'll see so far it's been a lot easier. Uh, the way this thing kind of goes into the truck is it would sit like this. So you have three bolts that hold this whole piece to the actual cross member itself. And then you can kind of see they give you holes to go straight up and then bolt this to the transmission itself. But for now, let's go ahead and get going on these four link bars. Now that all the holes are drilled for this, uh, you saw all the different ones inside and outside of the frame. These ones go to one inch because they give you these guys right here. These are responsible for giving the frame like structural integrity because believe it or not with bolts, if you just kind of run them through the frame, um, it'll actually start kind of pulling the frame together just because this stuff isn't like super thick but at the end of the day you're losing a lot of strength when you're having a mechanical advantage of a bolt so this will go through and then just kind of sit basically the the width of the frame so that frame can never collapse in on itself when you're tightening it's only gonna end up squeezing this piece of metal right here After many holes drilled, many bolts torqued, many tow mirrors folded up thanks to Hayden Huff, we uh, finally have a finished, complete lift kit. And it uh, was definitely not fun. Um, Fabtech, like I said, I, I still stick by what I said. Probably a very sturdy kit at the end of the day. A lot of overbuilt stuff, but definitely not the easiest thing in the world to install. I do like these sway bar end links, though, the, the way they did this. They give you new bushings, I didn't realize it until after, but then you have a button head, Allen head that holds all this together, new billet and a little hind joint down there. So it, definitely a nice beefy setup. The reservoirs came out great. These are just the standard brackets we talked about and just kind of used the one bolt out of the spring perch there to hold those up and then kept them nice and center right there. So curious to see how those will look and ride once the truck is actually on the ground and moving. Sway bar drop down brackets over here, coils, springs, all that good stuff. The brake line relocation bracket is right down here. So that kind of brings everything up and out of the way of this bar and all that. And then uh, just the other bracket here that was just uh, a lovely, lovely time to install. Way underneath there, you guys can see the trans transmission drop bracket. It's really dropping the transfer case, but everything angles down like we talked about earlier. In the very back here, we have a, just a simple setup. Didn't even record anything about it. Was the block kit and it was just a two inch block kit like we talked about these things came with add leafs i'm guessing that was two inches plus two inches to put us at four in the back and six up front now hayden did most of the installation on that so tell us how, how you think this install went was a good bad good kit it was pretty good kit it was a lot of fun cutting the uh factory u-bolts off but other than that Easy kit to install. Not too bad. Jordan, reviewing the Fab Tech. Like it, love it, hate it, good kit, bad kit. Uh, not a fan. Not a fan. How about the quality? Uh, it's definitely some good steel. Yeah, but I mean, we saw how many things that uh, there were welds in the way, and I don't know. I personally wasn't a fan. That is very difficult to install. Saw Mark struggle a lot, so. Yeah, the one spot of many that he's talking about, actually it was a couple spots this happened, was the welds get in the way. Like for right here, you couldn't even fit a washer or a socket on that because the weld is directly above that versus, you know, this one has a washer on it. That one, absolutely nothing on it. Once the vehicle's on the ground, we can use the steering to pull this track bar over because right now it's like the holes over here, we need to be over here. And these things are a lot easier to, to use your actual weight of the truck and the steering to, to move that back and forth versus trying to to pull the axle forward and backwards. So for the last time, let's sketchily get this thing on the ground. So 
that's the full look of the truck all finished up finally got it washed up cleaned up all the grinding dust that was all over this thing is finally out of here and man could i not be happier on the look of this it, it looks a lot bigger than i thought it would to be quite honest with you i was expecting something a little bit lower and i was also expecting the trimming and rubbing to be a lot worse than it actually needed to be when you look at this i just clipped my fender flare right here because i knew that would rub but really all i have to do is trim this up a little bit and then the new bumpers that are coming will take care of this it does catch a little bit of that but really for a 35 i think that's what saved me it's not something like 37 that most people people try to run with a six inch kit so that is a full install review yet to come of the ride i can tell you the tires i got to check the psi you can tell they're a little bit uh, hard but as far as the ride quality goes so far it's nothing that's like crazy stiff it still has a little bit of budge to it the back is the same but the front still has a little bit of play to it so we'll play with the shocks and see what kind of ride we get over time as always guys i greatly appreciate you watching the videos checking out the content on the fourth gen more to come on it we are far from done on this build if you did enjoy it though a simple free thing helps the channel a ton give it a big thumbs up that helps me tell youtube that we are a decent channel putting out good content so as always guys thanks for watching and we will see you in the next video